Hi, I'm Sam, your resident fantasy reader. And I'm Morgan, your romance reader. And we welcome you to Just One More Page. Where it's never just one more page. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hello. So you, you, know, you know what I was thinking about? I'm a, that, I'm a dog home. That Christmas is almost here? No, well that, <laughs> but, but you know, I, I was thinking about like, I was reminiscing about when we started the series so the dominion series yes and how the first time we recorded the first book i was at your house <gasps> and when we finished were. recording this not not this episode but the next episode because we're splitting this into two we will complete this episode with me visiting you at your oh. house my gosh listen we are coming I... full circle and then wait, wait, the wait, real just... full circle moment is what's wait. going to be happening after we record that last episode and can i'm I so just... excited about it can i just say something real quick to yeah. add on to what you're gonna say yeah so i listened to the last episode of the podcast that we read this book for it because yeah. i listen i have bad memory as it is so i'm like okay i need to like get a refresher how did i feel about the second book and at the end of that episode sam you yeah. said, hey, Abigail, if you ever listen to this, if you want to come on the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? She's coming on the podcast. Oh, my God. We should, uh, we should soundbite it into the into the Abigail's interview. We should just soundbite that and be <laughs> like, guys, guess what? <laughs> we spoke it into existence. It's happening. I literally like got to that point of the episode and I stopped and was like, wait a minute. Did we, did we manifest this? We manifested it. We manifested it to come to existence. This is, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, if you guys are, are unaware, we are going to be interviewing Abigail Owens, who is the writer of this book. And the episode's not coming up next week though it's gonna be a week afterwards but we're really excited to have her on the podcast and we are definitely gonna be uh fangirling quite quite a bit i know we're gonna have to like control and pull it in and abigail if you have opted to listen to this like we are so excited to talk to you and (laughs) like i'm i'm like you know it's just it's weird because i remember making us reading that the first book so if y'all don't know what we're talking about we're talking about the dominion series which is um this trilogy by Abigail Owen and we'll we'll, we'll of course summarize it and stuff but obviously it's going to like spoilers galore because of the last two books yeah but it's like we read the book and then I made that TikTok of like saying like this and I remember doing it and it was like such a one-off TikTok of like that when a book just like sits with you and stuff and I was like in post and then I remember us watching Heartstopper and you looked over at me and you were like Sam and I was like what and you're like go check our TikTok and then I just like made weird animal noises on the floor yeah, and I was like, you, like, oh my God. you like fell out you literally fell out of the chair I was you just because chair like legitimately she's the first author that's like interacted with us at least yeah. like at the very very beginning of well, this podcast and I think we, it's just like a weird like it's yeah. a really nice origin story and now three years later with us coming up on the, the almost yeah, the the end of our third year and then the four year anniversary of this podcast. Like just seeing how much we have grown and how much how well we have done with this podcast. I'm just so proud of us. And like I feel like this interview is just the icing on the cake of all of our hard work that we've put into this podcast. Yeah. Which shows you if you keep at it, you can do whatever you put your mind three years. to. Three years. It took us three years to get to this point. Three years. I've had you know, a kid, like, you know. I've gotten not a kid. I've gotten <laughs> too many books. That's what I've done. So I just was okay. like, yeah. Anyway, I uh, I'm just so proud of us. That's all I have to say. I am I'm just very very, very proud, proud of, of us too. Pat ourselves on the back, okay? Yep. Patting myself on the We're back. We're doing good. We're doing great. <laughs> okay. Listen, me and Sam are recording this episode a little bit late at night, so if we sound loopy. <laughs> Yeah, it's we're not totally 9.30 yet. I didn't just work a 12-hour shift at work. Ew. <laughs> Ew. 
Listen, I worked today, but then I came home and I took a very, very nice nap because I don't know what it is about a full moon, Sam, but I can't sleep during full moons. And last night was a full moon. And so I had a hard time sleeping last night. So when I got home, I was like, time for a nap, which I'm sure working in the medical field, hearing the word full moon probably sucks. Dude, this whole day was like, I don't even know. It was just chaos. I can go into a tangent after but, Ooh. like, I got through, like, 90% of my work day. And I never yeah. said a word. Like, you don't you don't acknowledge the day that you're having. But for the most part, like, I mean, I had a patient who was just refusing everything. He didn't want to take his meds. He didn't want to do nothing. And I was like, dude, I'm just here to chart all of it. I, like, not that I don't care, but, like, it, he was a 30-year-old patient. And he could make his own mind up. And I was like, dude, if you don't want to do it, I'm not going to force you. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know hanging out and chit-chatting with people and whatever. And then the charge nurse was like, hey, you're going to get an admission. And I was like, cool. And then when I read the admission and saw the admission, and she was a royal train wreck. Oh, my gosh. Like, just so bad. And not only that, but the ED didn't do nothing except bring her up to us and start, like, a unit of blood. So it was like everything was in the red, and red is bad because it means it's late. And all of these order sets had never been started and all of these like treatments had not been started. And I was like, I spent the last two and a half hours of my shift in this person's room trying to get around the family members going, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I hate doing that. It drives me crazy. Not, not the like getting around family members, but like, I feel like I'm in their way when actually like they're in my way, but I'm like, I'm so sorry. I now have to reach over and go for another set of gloves because these ones are messy and it was just, I, I left there and I'm like, I'm just ready to go home. I'm ready to go home. I'm all yeah. done. Today's yeah. done. Thank God. I yeah. hate full moons. That's like me, at, you know, listen, me at work, I run. I run to the to go clock out. I'm like, mm-hmm. like you don't see me. I am running up those stairs and I am gone like Sonic. Bye. Okay. I'm running. Okay. So, you know what? Let's go into this book since yes, it is, please. you know, it is not, like a little late. Um, so we are going to be discussing, obviously, the final book in the Dominion series by Abigail Owens called The Shadow Rules All. If you haven't checked out the series, then you should because coming from a romance reader who doesn't even like fantasy too much, <laughs> this book is top tier. It is fantastic. And I will never stop raving about how much I love and adore this book series. So on this podcast, we've actually reviewed and discussed The Liar's Crown in The Stolen Throne, which we reviewed on episode 35 and on episode 70. If you've gotten to this point, we hope that you've read the other two books. If you haven't, this may be a spoiler, okay? So let me just tell you what the third book is all about. So King Edelon has taken everything from mayor her throne her even her kingdom to make matters worse the shadows who once tormented raven revan i'm sorry is now living with her they are hissing and trying to convince her to betray her friends to make matters worse without raven she is struggling with the shadows because without him there is no light an alignment is almost upon us the culmination of centuries that have been fueled by vengeful vengeful king's rage they're outnumbered and under power and even if they can unleash the trap goddesses they would destroy the kingdom and everything in it so sam yes i like well first off before okay. we even get to this let me just please explain that since this book is a quite a bigger book we decided that we would split up into two d- separate parts we read up to chapter 38 right or no, it was 37. 39. 39. 39. We read up to chapter 39. So this is only yeah. like a halfway point. So we're going to be reviewing the, the second half of the book next week. But we only have up to this part. So if we're talking about something, you're like, wait, no, this got sobbed. We haven't read it yet. We haven't yes. read it yet. And also, it was really hard for me to stop reading. <laughs> and- I know. I like. I got all the way up. It was like my audiobook went chapter 39 and I had to pause like so fast because I was like I would I would have just let it run I was like I just want to keep going and I I feel like too like it's gonna be hard to talk about this without spoiling the crap out of it mm-hmm. I don't even know I don't even know because there, there's so much to talk about and yeah. there's so many things that happen 
And I'm just like, I really, really feel wholeheartedly that this book is going to destroy me into a million pieces. Listen, and it's I already just, destroyed me. It has I know, already it's, it's destroyed ruined, me. It's ruining my life in the worst way. It really is. Well, I, so for some reason, I thought that we were going to be ending on chapter 34. So when I got to chapter 34, I was like, wait, no, this is actually a really good point. I don't want to stop. And I looked at your message and I was like, oh no, I have a couple more episodes, but I definitely made sure I put on like the little sleep timer because I was like, I do not want to miss anything. Also, I realized that in my notes. I've been calling Revan Raven. I do apologize. I think you've been calling him Raven since like day one. Listen, I get confused. (laughs) No, I well, I wrote I wrote Revan, but then Microsoft Word said that's not a word, and they correct it to Raven. So as I'm reading my notes, I'm like, is it really Raven? I didn't think it was Raven. I was like, you know what? I wrote it, so it has to make sense. And I looked over to my other side of my notes where all the character names are. I'm like. Oh, his name is Revan. <laughs> it is very much Revan. <laughs> it is very much Revan. And I don't know why I kept saying Raven, so I do apologize. I know. Uh, so I know it's really hard to rate a book since we're only halfway through it. But if you were to rate it so far, what would you give it? I'd say like a 4.5 right now. Maybe a 4.8. Like, I'm rating it high. I don't know if I'm quite at the yeah. five star mark yet. And I don't think I can, like, feasibly give it a five star until we finish the book. Yeah, but I I, I just like, I mean there have been some twists in this that have already like been revealed that I'm just like what the fuck. Yeah, and we're I only really at, like we're it. only at the halfway point, dude. We're only at the halfway point. I know. I feel like we'll need like a bottle of like tequila when we finish this. <laughs> I know, and just a really good cry sesh. Yes, yes. We can like you know what we're gonna be together. I mean, we're not gonna finish the book together, but oh, we'll be together when we're recording, so we can have yes, like snuggy blanket, bring blankets, and then we can just you know relax. Because well, you right? know why not? I I do want to say for me personally. I, in the beginning of it, it was really hard for me to get in the book, but I think it's only because of the fact that I have such bad memory. And it also could be for the fact that I read so many books. Like, I read a lot of books. I think so far this year I've read over 80. But, like, I was trying to remember who was who. Mm-hmm. And I was like, who is Kane? And it took me a minute to, like, realize. I'm like, oh, that's the simp. <laughs> that's the <what's> crap. <laughs> <laughs> and it, so I think it definitely took me a minute to get into the book because I'm trying to remember like okay what happened in the last book what is like their main purpose of this book where are they going and this is why I think writers should have a section in the start of their book saying hey this is the third book in the series previously these are, these are the uh, characters in this series. yes Yes, we need a we need a previously on section yeah. where you well, can we last us, left our characters one year ago. One year ago, this is what happened. This is what happened. I'd be like, great. Now I know that Revan is away and that Kane is still running after Marin. Now I'm yeah. I'm good. Now I know what's happening. Now I know what's happening. But I really like this book. I think that in the beginning of it, once again, I was still a little bit kind of lost trying to figure out who was who and what was happening. Mm. But when we kind of got to, I don't want to call it the second half because obviously we're in the middle of the book, but I guess the like second quarter of the book, I really liked it because it was really fast paced and so much stuff was going on and there's so many mysteries and there's all this stuff happening and I cannot, I'm like itching to read the second part of this book. Right. Me too. I'm so excited. Um, I'm so excited. But well, like, let's let's talk about going what's happened in this book. So yeah, so if you have not read this book, which girl, get on it, okay? Get on it. Then check out last week's episode in which we read and discuss It's You Not Me. No, it's It's You Not Me by Alex Slate. I think that's it's, the name. It's not you, it's me. I it's not know. you, it's me by Alex Slate, which was Listen, a YA we, novel. We, we've read like it, it was like if I were there, or if I wish you were there. Like we've read lots, of, like at least three different books in a row that have nearly identical titles to each yes. other that have nothing to do with each other. It's very confusing. But this <laughs> novel is a YA novel that follows a teenage girl who's working a job, and she finds out that she got her boss broken up with because she runs this website in which she gives advice to people about how to break up with their loved ones, and because she's so guilt ridden. 
and because she wants to keep her job she decides to help him get back his girlfriend uh definitely check it out it was a really really cute episode and a fun book that we read so anyways let's go and spoil the rest of this book okay so sam oh no you muted yourself oh my god you can mute yourself (laughs) wait you can mute yourself by pressing the space button yes I never knew that. Okay. Uh, I got okay. so, I, I so excited I hit my keyboard. Oh, my God. So I want to talk about, and I, not even, like, end of the book, like, the beginning. The very, very beginning mm-hmm. where we actually have Edelon's point of view. And I kind of felt bad for him because, like, he's sitting there and he is just, like, looking at his love, Esha, as she becomes queen. And he's like... I love this woman. She is my best friend. We have the great, like the character arc in this, in this prologue was just like, it was so heartbreaking. It was was so heartbreaking. Cause he's like, I love this woman. She is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Like, yeah, her sister is the same, but like, we have this connection. I'm going to put a baby in her belly. She's the best thing ever. And then it's like, oh gosh, what's going on? The gods have appeared. I'm going to destroy you. I was like, how did we flip? Well, listen, like, I was living for the prologue. When he said, I want to put a baby in your belly, I was like, sir. Sir. <laughs> Revit. Sir. Revit. me. No. Edelon, sir. Okay. So I have a, okay. This could just be my really bad memory. And honestly, okay. I think the last time we read this book or last time we read the second book, I reread the first book again. But yeah. I didn't have time to reread the second one. So is there a reason why she did that? Like, I can't remember if there's a reason why in the second book where it was revealed why Edelon. Well, they, so, the, Edelon mm-hmm. so Edelon's mom was one of the, like, goddesses over the Dominions. And yeah, they had, like, invited them to the coronation yep. as an ambush to yeah. the goddesses it yeah. has nothing to do with edelon and oh, okay she like trapped the his mother into one of the ambulance he but she she destroyed his mom but was there a reason why i can't remember I can't, why I, can't remember like I feel like reason i feel why. like maybe it's because the gods was, left yeah, the they, people yeah like, they like they, they had a distrust because he was talking about how they had a distrust for the people Mm-hmm. Or like that they like they felt like the gods abandoned them and so they like took revenge on the gods and invited yeah. them to the coronation and like oh. destroyed the sand nymph. Yeah. And and the sand nymph was like a part of the whole which I feel like that's why um to the sand nymph as, as like they're getting closer and closer to like re rehashing this historical event had done what she did in the first book, which was she um marked Marin instead of Tabra like she was supposed to mark Tabra but she marked Marin and I think it's the same sand nymph who was um uh betrayed mm-hmm. and her sands were taken away to build these amulets yeah it was. I'm really I'm really curious is if they're actually going to be able to break these goddesses open or what's going to happen with these amulets like toward the end of this book yeah what's going to happen because Mare basically caused it also, like, my question is, what's going to happen to um, Riven? Like, is, is he going to, if they kill Edelon? I don't know. There's so many questions I have because of the fact that this book is not even over yet. Um, yeah. So I have, like, a lot, uh, so many questions to be like, what's going to happen? Well, I feel but, like, mm-hmm. like they, they already established early on that um Revan is like his own person outside of Edelon yeah. like he has his shadows and he is part of him but he's become more human as time has gone on and he's separated himself as like yeah he's kind of uh, Edelon's like twin but he's not connected to him that way mm-hmm. and maybe like once we get to the end of the book then they like s- my, my hope is that they sever that relationship that he just is his own person yeah and like it's so almost true. like it's almost like it resets the whole timeline like Marin is esha and revan is edelon but it's esha and edelon if the the betrayal never happened, happened. and it like resets the bond mates yeah well we can only hope but talking about betrayal talking oh about betrayal <sighs> horace 
I Horace. know. Horace. Why? Why you gotta do that? Okay. Why you gotta do that? So it's revealed that Horace is a spy for Adelon because Adelon had his sister and was torturing his sister. But in Horace's defense, he broke off that connection with Adelon when he swore to Mare that, that he will be her bodyguard. Do you agree Which is with probably the- why Mare never killed him. You will, okay, I was gonna ask you, do you agree with the punishment that she gave him? I agree with it only because, like, he deserved to be punished for the fact that when they were in the Shadow Wood or whatever it was that yeah. Revan had built for the, the Lost Souls, and they had their safe place, and he, because I, even, I remember even in that book, they were like, how did they know where we were? And, they, and, it, and there was, like, some excuse that was made about, like, Edelon feeling Revan's powers, but it was Horace. Yeah, and Horace each the whole time. each time they were found, and it didn't make any sense why they were found. It was Horace, and so he kept repeatedly putting them into danger. And I don't care if he swore fealty to Marin, he still betrayed them. And so, like the best thing she could have done, I guess, because wanderers are so connected to their like people, is to banish him. Like yeah. she could have said, "Hey, I'm going to unalive you." But she, but she didn't. She banished him. And I I honestly agree with it because, yeah, he may have tried to redeem himself in the end, but he still needs to have consequences for his actions from the beginning. Well, so I, I do feel bad for him, but I do understand where he was coming from because that's I, his sister. Yeah, that's I his sister. That it's his sister, but, like, holy shit. Like, you, you just put all of, these, all of these innocent people's lives in danger. Do you think things would have changed if he had told her? Like when uh, the the girl from the last, I forget the the character from the last book that also was betraying her that came to find out that she had her family, and Mary was like, "Well, if she just told me, I would have been more sympathetic. I would have helped." Do you think Horace should have told her what was happening? Yes, a hundred percent. Um, I think too because like Horace knows that that uh, Revan kind of has a savior complex. Or at least he did prior to being like swallowed up by Edelon. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like if he had said something to him, he would have found a way to get his sister, Horace's sister back. Because yeah. I mean, Christ, he went on this like crusade for Marin, and he knew how to get into the castle and and steal the twin, even though he stole the wrong one in the first book. Mm-hmm. Like he had ways. He has the ability to like move in and out of the shadows and stuff. He could have done something. And I feel like he would have helped Horace had Horace said something. Well, I kind of feel like he just didn't know how to bring up to Mare. But then again, mm-hmm. like I agree, he should have said something to her and hope that by him coming up to her and telling her the truth that she'd be more forgiving than how it went down. Right. Um, I do want to mention Revan's memory loss. Listen, listen, I know that Abigail Owens, because I, I get her newsletter all the time, that she likes K-dramas. And when he lost his memory, I was like, this is a stereotypical <laughs> K-drama thing. She's adding that. I was like, what do you do? Get hit by a car? Now I can't remember the love of his life. And I'm like, oh, wait, that actually, uh, did happen right. i thought the scene where she was talking to voss and i think it was voss and horace about um about revan revan and they're like just you know flirt with him just do this and even uh tabra's giving her advice and she's like i don't know how he fell in with love with me i literally hated him we <laughs> literally fought and all of a sudden we just started making out i don't know what happened <laughs> i <laughs> I was like, just throw a knife at him. Just fight, fight it right? out, fight it out. You'll end up kissing. Well, and he even, he even was like, "Did you throw a knife at me?" And she goes, "Yeah, yeah. I kind of did." <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "That's foreplay." <laughs> 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 okay, so I really like the fact that he lost his memory, though, because I feel like it gives a new twist to the book, kind of thing, like where he has to fall in love with her again. Although I hated it because I want more romance. But I feel like their love story is so cute as it is. So I'm excited to see how he falls back in love with her. Although I do want to ask you, do you think he'll get his memories back? 
I hope he does. I hope they have, like, because I guess the bond mate, like, mark on him is broken up. Like, Edelon, like, broke it, which I thought it couldn't be broken, but apparently it can't be. Um, I'm hoping that, like, it'll, like, fix, like, they'll do something. I don't know what they'll do. But, like, it'll, like, heal the bond mate yeah. connection. And then all of a sudden all the memories come back. Because he's getting, like, little flickers here and there. And I just, I feel so bad for... Marin because she loves him so much and she is doing everything she can to not cross a line but like when they finally kiss he's like can I kiss you and I was like uh yes please kiss her um like, and she was please. like this is the best thing ever and he goes and she's like do you ha- do you remember this and he's like no he's like I'm like <laughs> man man <laughs> I can't handle this I just love how she's like do you remember no no <laughs> No, no, I don't anything. I, I mean, thanks anything. for the kiss, but eh, nah. Eh. And then, and then he's like, "We're bond mates, and you didn't say anything." And she's like, "Well, yeah, like you already barely believed me about half the crap I say. I'm yeah. like, why would, why would I tell but... you this important detail that you do not need to know right now?" And yeah, then he's like, "Exactly. Oh, you're betraying me. You're lying to me." And, and I'm then like, he gets that priestess to try to break or do what she's doing. Yeah, and... like fix the the bond. Yeah, and then come to find out everything is broken, and I guess we'll see how that's going to get fixed in the future. Hopefully, right. it gets fixed. Uh, so, talking about other bond mates, uh, let's talk about uh, Kane's father. Oh my god, dude! I got to that point of freaking like, oh, uh, Kane killing his father, and I was just like, "What is happening right now?" And then his mom was like. Do it. Romeo Juliet style. Yeah, out. She's do like, it. Kill him. Oh my God, he's my bondmate. I shall kill myself, and we will find each other in the afterlife. And then it's like, oh yeah, now Kane's like the leader of the Sand People. Now and he doesn't have like, any. Oh shit, people. Well, because like, so basically, how they find out that he was betraying Mare is the fact that Kane's father took um took her sister Tabra. Um, mm. when that was happening. I thought that something happened to her sister, like severely happened to her sister. Right. I didn't realize it was Kane's father betraying everyone. And when he died, I was like, you know what? You kind of deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of deserved it. So I'm not too upset about this. You know, I'm not I'm not too upset. So you, you kind of deserve it. But yeah, yeah a little, I, I a little did. stabby stabby from your son, you know? Exactly. Although I do kind of feel like there's so much character development with uh, Pella because Pella always looked up to her father even though her father never put her first because he was always looking at his hair Mm -hmm. the heir to his like you know his position so he wasn't really looking at Pella too much and Pella does whatever she could to get her father's approval and this is something that she like basically betrayed him because she used her powers to control his emotions mm-hmm. so that Kane could get the upper hand and stab him, which is, I'm, I mean, if this was just a weird family dynamic altogether, I was like, Oh my God. Right. So, so mm-hmm. okay. So Kane's father is dead. So Kane now is like the leader of the sand people. I don't even know where I'm going with that. It's just like, why? I'm just wondering why now, why now make him the leader? Like, why didn't, like... Well, because he can control his people to fight yeah. for her. Because, you know, if if he, if Cain's father lived, they wouldn't be siding with Mare and her sister. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I also thought really, was really funny? Um what? Not, not Cain killing his father. That's, that's a tragedy. Was when Marin was talking to the servants and she was like, Yeah, you remember all those times that like Tabor yeah. was acting weird? That was me. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Yeah, that checks out. And they're she's like, Wow, maybe I was shitty as being she's like, like, my sister stand in. She's like, Maybe did I not do a good job? Like what? Yeah. I, thought I did yeah, I was shit being... being my sister. I thought I was doing a great job. Oops, my bad. Yeah. Uh so uh, do you have any theories of how this book is going to end? Okay, I do have Ooh. a theory of someone who's going to die, and you're not going to like it. Okay, let me I, put down my mug. Let me put down my coffee mug. Let me sit up straight. Who do you think is going to die? Tabra. I'll try. You know what? I'm not too upset about it. <laughs> so, 
I feel like Tabor, I, I feel like, so th- throughout this like whole beginning of the book and everything, Mare keeps saying, I'm the expendable one. I'm the one who's supposed to die. I'm this person. And over and over, she's like, look how Tabor is such a queen and like how she just holds herself and everything. And I feel like she's going to make herself the expendable one and she's yeah. going to die in Marin's place. Well, maybe she goes up to Adelon and sacrifice herself to Adelon pretending to be pretending and that's a, to be Yeah, that's a possibility Mare. too. Um, well, I, I don't feel like Revan's going to die. I really feel yeah. like we're going to, I mean, I already got spoiled in some like Goodreads reviews. Sam, like, why did you look? I didn't look. I was looking for the, the summary to this book and I saw it. And no. also Abigail screenshotted a, a a review and then put it up on her Instagram and I saw that too. So I was like, cool. Um, so I know generally like the main thing that's going to happen at the end of this, but I really feel like Tabor is going to die well, in Marin's place. I thought you were going to say, I honestly thought you were going to say Voss. Because I like Voss. Voss so. is probably going to die too because he's too much no! of a father figure. No! He probably is. He's going to no! get... S- Listen, like, it's no! like... Remember when I made you read Snow Like Ashes and you're like, oh, yeah, he's going to die because he's the father figure? That's going to happen to Voss. Don't you... That was Horus. That was Horus. Horus is a father figure. Right? Yeah, Voss is too. Shut your mouth, Sam. Voss has been like... Her is, father figured okay, protector listen. throughout this entire if series. Voss dies. I like. Well, I don't. Kane's a sip. So Kane. Kane is Kane. Well, Kane's the leader of the, of the of the Sand Peoples. So he's he's probably gonna live and be um, fine. I don't remember her name, and I should have wrote it down. But she's a girl that's blue, and she when she speaks, she like screams like it's a loud pitch noise. If yeah. she dies. If she dies, I'm throwing this book. Please don't do that to me. <laughs> Abigail, I know you're going to be on the podcast in a couple of weeks. Please don't do that to me. I know you already wrote the book and published it. It's Please already in our that. hands. It's already happened. It's like Schrodinger's cat. It's already happened. We just don't know if, it's, if it Please has or has not happened. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. Seriously. Oh, did you like the scene with Mimic? That was interesting. That was a cool scene. That was a cool scene. It was very interesting. I was like, I don't know where this is going, but I'm like enjoying I, this. Scene. Yeah, I was like, I don't know where it's going, but I'm here for the ride to see Mimic and Echo and, uh, and uh, well, no, Mimic and who was the other one? I don't remember. This is me saying I have bad memory and it's late at night, so I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Sam, do you have any other thing you'd like to add about this book? Oh, I know this is going to ruin me. And I'm probably going to show up to your house on Monday with just like bright red eyes because I'm probably going to cry because I'm going to, I plan on finishing this book by the time I get to you. Yeah. And I am probably going to be absolutely destroyed and I will stop and buy us a bottle of wine because I feel like we're going to need it. Wine. We're also going to need, uh, need to go to the bookstore and buy some emotional books. Facts. You know, emotional Facts. therapy books. So, yeah, that's going to happen. So, if you guys are curious, of course, next week we're going to be reading the second half of this book. And uh, hopefully some of our theories will be right. Hopefully Sam's theory about Voss dying will be wrong. But if you guys would like to support our podcast, we please remember to rate us on Spotify as it does help push our podcast out there. Also, remember to check out our YouTube channel, which we don't really post on, but for some reason we have subscribers i have <laughs> so, like 37 subscribers yeah i'm like i saw that today i go okay we don't post anything but i love this i love this energy um, right. but we will see you guys next week oh wait sorry sam i almost cut you off tell us about our socials please <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. I'm just, just leaving it. Anyway, uh, if you think we are absolutely hilarious, which fun fact, my friends, we are. We do have a TikTok. It is Just One More Page Podcast, which you should go check out because we're going to be filming TikToks together and it's going to be a combo Morgan Sand TikTok week. It's going to be fun. Um, and then if you, for all the pictures, stories, anything else we decide to post, we do have an Instagram. It is Just One More Page Official. So go ahead and check us out on there. Come slide into our DMs. We love talking to you all. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and I am so excited to finish this book. Yeah, I'm so excited, too. I'm so excited. Sam, can you imagine that we read this first book on episode 35? I know. That's crazy. 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 Okay. Well, we'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye. Bye.